Oh, hey, mate, is everything all right? No, mate. Dude, it's been a week already. We have one more week to try and film something, and if we don't find something to film around here, we're going to literally no, lose it's all okay, let's go. It's no, a, we can check outside, maybe there's there'll nothing be... nothing here. So I'm, I'm telling you, mate, it's April already, and it's... Oh, my God, it's freezing. Dude, there's no, there's freezing. not going to be nothing out there. Oh, my God. Dude, I don't know what we're going to do, honestly. If we don't find something, if we don't find a reptile soon, if we don't get some sort of amphibian, everyone's going to leave our channel. Mum is going to oh, be no. so disappointed. They're going to go to that wild report no, guy. We, we can't have that happen. They can't do that. They can't do that. All right, give me the camera. We'll find something. Okay. I don't know. We have a sister. Should we film her? No, I don't think people want to see that. Why not? Oh, mate. Wait, is this always here? No. Okay. Wait, what is Maybe that? Maybe there's something under? You're kidding. Oh, my God. No <laughs> way. Okay. 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 Uh, get it. Go, okay, go, okay. go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. okay. Ready? Three, two. One. Hey guys, it's Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers, and as you guys can see, we're doing something a bit different today. So normally we would be out in the woods filming our intros, but today we're actually inside our house. And the reason we're doing that is we're actually launching a brand new series for you guys called Species Spotlight. So Ev, you want to tell them a bit about what Species Spotlight will be? Absolutely. So as full-time students, we don't exactly have the resources to go on large-scale production trips to show you guys exotic animals in their natural habitats. Luckily, we have access to a number of animal ambassadors from all over the world that we're going to be getting up close in front of the cameras for you guys so you can better appreciate the global diversity of wildlife we have here on the planet. And for our pilot episode of this series, we are going to start with an animal that is very close to our hearts, our own pet, Leopard Gecko. So our Leopard Gecko's name is Buddy, and even though he is our pet, we are going to be talking about his wild counterparts for this video. Now, Leopard Geckos, their native range is actually through all of southwestern Asia, so that's going to be encompassing parts of the Middle East, like Afghanistan and Pakistan, and also down through parts of northern India. Now, their habitat is mostly comprised of desert and scrub, which means that it gets very hot during the day, so they're going to be taking shelter under rocks or shrubs or down in their burrows where they lay their eggs. And they're only going to be coming out to hunt during the nighttime hours or also dawn and dusk when it's a little bit cooler. And in the zoology world, that's what we call being nocturnal, which is active at night, and crepuscular, which is active at dawn or dusk. So now let's take a look at the anatomy of the leopard gecko, starting right up here at his head. Now one of the first things you're going to notice is those giant eyes, and they've actually evolved those to be able to see in the low light levels of the desert at night when these guys are most active looking for their prey. Now a cool thing about those eyes is these guys actually have eyelids, which is pretty unusual for geckos. A lot of species do not have eyelids, and to actually maintain their health, they will lick their eyeballs, which is a pretty crazy way to keep them clean. But this guy does not have to do that. Now another thing these guys have on their head is they have those big internal ears. Those are those holes that you see on the sides of their head. And leopard geckos actually have pretty decent hearing, which they use to be able to detect predators in their environment. Now if we look farther down his body, you can actually get a look at those claws. Now a typical gecko, like you'd think of, does not have claws. Instead, they will have those pads that will allow them to cling to virtually any surface, including glass. But this species of gecko is not capable of doing that because this is a desert terrestrial animal living mostly on land. These guys will not need to climb, there's nothing out there for them, so these guys have those claws to be able to move through the sand and the rocks more efficiently. Now one of the other things you can see about the leopard gecko is that big tail there. Now a leopard gecko's tail serves two different purposes, the first of which is it's actually a fat reserve for these animals. So they will store fat from the prey that they eat in their tail, and they can actually subside off of that if they're not finding enough prey in the desert, which does happen quite frequently, prey can be quite scarce out there. So these guys have evolved to store lots of fat in their bodies so they can go for long periods without eating. Now another thing that tail will do is it can actually pop off if a predator tries to grab it. Now that is an adaptation called caudual autonomy. And that's very useful when this guy's being preyed on by birds or snakes, 
If something were to try and grab that tail, he could pop it right off, and even though it does grow back, he will lose that fat reserve, and it is a little bit painful, so that's why we are never grabbing him with that tail, because it can hurt him. So, leopard geckos are insectivorous, which means they're going to be feeding exclusively on insects. But, because they have such a large range, their diet will vary slightly depending on where they're from. But, in general, these guys are going to be feeding on insect larvae, like those from beetles, moths, crickets and locusts, and even spiders. Now, these guys also have a large number of predators, including snakes, birds of prey like hawks or eagles, golden jackals, and even monitor lizards in parts of their range, so they have a lot to contend with while they're out looking for food. There we go, buddy. So, we brought Buddy into some better light because we want to show you how beautiful his coloration actually is. Take a look at that. He has that beautiful yellow coloration all down his body, and even though we love how this guy looks, this is actually not typical of leopard geckos in the wild. Naturally, these guys are going to have a much more drab tan coloration, which helps them blend into their environment and protect themselves from predators. Come here, where are you going? There we go. Now, the leopard gecko is a very, very popular pet, and that's actually where you get so many different color morphs. There are hundreds of them available, and we think Buddy is a yellow fire morph. That's what they typically call this type. But there are many others. You can get leopard geckos that have purple hues and black coloration, and even shades of red and orange. So they're a very diverse pet. And they actually are one of the few reptiles that we would recommend as a pet that people should buy. A lot of reptiles do not keep well in captivity. They don't adjust very well. But leopard geckos are great for handling. They rarely, if ever, bite. And they really do make good pets. And that willingness to breed in captivity has made them one of the premier pets in the pet trade. Although there is one characteristic that carries through through all leopard geckos, no matter what morph you get, and that is those trademarked leopard spots where he gets his name. And you can see those really uh, brilliantly right there on his head. Well, there you have it, guys, our very first episode of Species Spotlight. What did you think of this new format of video? Do you want to see more exotic creatures presented in this style? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Now, as winter finally gives way to spring here in eastern Pennsylvania, we'll be doing a lot more exploring, which means we'll be getting some exciting species in front of the cameras for you guys. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have more episodes of the Wildlife Brothers coming very soon that you guys will not want to miss, so stay tuned. Talk to you later, guys. Hey, guys. It's Buddy here. If you like this video, Please subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>